Hey, today we are going to be ripping to pieces this old Chromebook. Uh, it works, and it's hopefully still going to work after we do so. So, to prove to you that it works, I just push the button. There we go. It's booting. So, okay, it kind of works. It just turned off. Now, what you're going to need is a screwdriver to unscrew the screws and a jar to keep the screws in, unless you want to lose them, which you're probably going to do anyway. All right, let's do it. It's time to start taking it apart. And uh, we're going to start by taking apart the bottom. If you do want to see me take apart the webcam, skip ahead to what time I'm going to put right here. And let's get on with it. So you want to take out all the screws on the bottom. I think this laptop originally had 11 screws, but I lost a bunch of them. So I'd say there's probably like eight or nine screws, which is enough to hold it together. It's more than enough to hold it together. They put a lot more screws on the bottom than you really need to. See, Max, they are more efficient. They only have like five screws on the bottom, which is still a lot. Uh, but they're inefficient because some of them are longer than the others, so if you put them in the wrong hole, you damage the computer. I think that's intentional to keep people from repairing their laptops themselves, but sometimes when you take them into the Apple store and you tell them to fix it, they put the long screw in the short hole and screw everything up. It's really unfortunate. Anyway, uh, the reason this computer is so damaged is because it was confiscated from me and was used as a loaner for a few months. And I kept it in perfect condition. It was like brand new. But when it gets used as a learner, it gets no respect, even less respect than the normal ones do, which isn't even much. So it's very ruined. Oh, there goes that screw. And. That's why all these latches are broken, and why it's difficult to get it to charge. But it still kind of works, so I guess that's good. And this screw, this screw I think is just loose. So let me just get the screws out. You just go. Ah, maybe it needs to be unscrewed. My chair is creaking like crazy. Oh, it did need to be unscrewed. Okay. Well, uh, banging it on the table never hurts. It's always a good thing. Now, if you've never opened yours before, when you're taking this bottom piece off, be careful, because there might be a little cable attached to it. Some models of Chromebook have that, others don't. Mine doesn't, which means that I can just go like, eh, take it off. The bottom piece here isn't very interesting. There's just some spray painted plastic on the bottom, and that's it. But what is interesting is this whole thing here. So, this is the most obvious component. This is the battery. And, funny story about the battery a kid in my middle school said that he wanted to make a phone charger and he decided to use an old Chromebook because it has USB ports on the motherboard so he just took out all the pieces except the motherboard and the battery and he had it working and it charged his phone but it was really inefficient because the whole time the motherboard was trying to boot an operating system so the battery is lasting less time than it should have and he was always terrified when he carried it around because he thought that the battery was a lithium polymer battery. It's not. I guess he just misread this and thought it was lithium polymer. It's not. It's lithium ion, which is slightly safer. And that's that's the battery. Now, the hard drive, or you're supposed to call it the SSD, but who cares? It's a hard drive is right here. There's originally a sticker on it that said, don't take this sticker off. So I took the sticker off, of course. Nothing happened. But 
You can unscrew it. You unscrew it right here to take it out. And then you just pop it out like that. That's a hard drive, 16 gigabytes. Not very much. Most computers have that much RAM, but not this one. The RAM's right here. It's got four gigabytes. And oh no! See, you remember how uh, losing the screws is an important part of taking apart a computer? I think we've just gone through this step. Uh, that's not good. So yeah, you're supposed to lose screws. That's like, that's something you do. What you're not supposed to do is lose important screws, such as that of a hard drive. I'm gonna see if I can find it. Not. Oh well. Okay. Good news, I found the screw. And it looks like it's actually the same as all the screws on the outside. See, these laptops are made so cheaply that they are, they just use all the same screws so that they don't have to pay for different screws. You can just buy it all in bulk. That's how come Chromebooks are so cheap. One of the reasons. And only the bad Chromebooks are cheap. Or like fancy ones are like a thousand bucks. But nobody buys them because who's gonna spend a thousand dollars on a Chromebook? Absolute garbage dump throwing your money down the toilet. Okay, I can't get this screw to go in. It's just trying to open my finger. Got it. There we go. That, this is how you do it. Fix it. You know what? This might not actually be the right screw. I think maybe I dropped a different one on the ground and and picked it up. Well, it worked. So who cares? As I said earlier, this is the RAM right here. The processor right here. It's also got a built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth chip right inside that processor. That's pretty cool. There's a fan right here. Uh, I have a one that I took out of the machine, a different one, and if you pick this off, I think there's a, how you do it. You just pull this out, right? Maybe not. Maybe I'm breaking my CPU fan. Yeah, it looks like it's a little more difficult to get than just doing that, but you can get those pins and you can get the fan to spin, which is pretty fun. And then... I guess the CPU is actually under here, and this is just the wireless chip. Yeah, forget what I said about the CPU. Processor's in there. That's a wireless chip. Cool. Uh, here they have some USB ports and stuff that you can just disconnect from the motherboard. Don't see why you would do it. And then here's something actually really interesting about this Chromebook. It's got another slot right here. And this slot, you could solder on another one of these hard drive connectors and put it there and have a different hard drive there. So I guess they're using the same motherboard for a bunch of different Chromebooks and some of them has to have the hard drive over here so they just put the hard drive there and don't have the connector over here. So I thought that was interesting. And then I think that's it. So take the top which I accidentally put the leg of my chair on doesn't really matter. I mean, you can use it without the bottom. Stick it on like that. And then you get... Just snap it into place. And you get these screws right here. And just screw them in, you know? See how when you screw in all the screws? Pretty fun. Screws are not the most particularly interesting way. This is part of the reason why I think they should have less screws inside computers. Because it's really annoying when you have to take it apart to unscrew 15 screws. Well, they're not 15 anymore because I've lost half of them, but to have to unscrew 15 screws and then screw them all back in just to like poke around or something and that's why I like uh, desktops like the one I got over there because you can 
just pop the side panel off without unscrewing anything, which is pretty awesome, considering what annoying work it is to do that. So I imagine at this point during the editing, I'll like fast forward during... Ah! And there we go. Uh, another demonstration of a crucial step of computer repair. Losing screws. It's gone. Never gonna see it again in my life. Oh, look at that. I can get it to be symmetrical. I always like it when you lose just the perfect number of screws so that you can get your computer to go back together with all the screws in a symmetrical place. Really nice when you can do that. And the great news is that in this case you can. Except for this one. This screw should be right in the middle of the case, but it's not. It's slightly more to the left. It really bothers me. But it's close enough to symmetrical. It's as close to symmetrical as it'll get. Unless I lost this screw. Which I guess I'll have to do next time. And then it'll be symmetrical. Alright, all done. So, that was taking apart the bottom. Let's see if it still boots. I was making weird noises a second ago. And would you look at that? It does not boot. It's okay. We'll fix it later. Right here, we have the laptop open. And we're going to take apart the webcam and part of the display assembly. And there's one thing... I want to say is that it's not booting. Oh, never mind. I guess it is booting. It's booting now. Yay! Okay. So how about we do it while it's turned on? That's more exciting. So while it's turning on, to take apart the webcam part here, you actually need to use your fingernails. You stick them under here, and you yoink this plastic thing off. And uh, there's a kid in my middle school, a different kid, who... He, he took off these hinges that, that are down here and he his computer would flip all the way around because it was just hanging by these wires. And then he got to the point where it wasn't even flipping around so the display was literally basically just attached from the keyboard. Uh, which is... It was interesting and then it stopped working. It got a replacement. So, now we've taken that off got the webcam right here and actually I'm gonna log in don't look at the password so I'm gonna log in here so we can see it on the screen and I'm gonna use an app called cheese which is the Linux equivalent of photo booth on a Mac so we're gonna go here to cheese, right there. And look, it's me! Okay, so, right, this webcam, you can just kinda peel it off, it's got some adhesive on it. And then, oh, I accidentally unplugged it. Uh, but, yeah, this is the webcam, right here. And it plugs in right here. And I, all the people, everyone would, tear off this piece, because this is really easy to do. You just tear off this piece, and then they would give me their webcams. And then there's this other kid who was trying to, he was convinced that he could contact iFixit and sell them webcams, so he was paying people to give him webcams. And I don't think he ended up contacting iFixit, even trying to contact I fix it but he had like a whole collection of Chromebook parts in his locker Ugh. okay I can't get it to go back in so yeah you plug it in there I've got a couple spares here and there that people have given me and I kept just for fun there it's, it's working again it's me and then also there's these screws here on the side which take apart the display assembly. And I'm not going to do that because 
We did it one time at school, and basically underneath this first layer of plastic, there's a bunch of filters for the screen that are like bendy film. And a lot of them are really interesting if you like put them over your face and you, you look around, it's trippy. But they make a big mess and I don't know what order they go in, and so I don't want to have to put that back together. It's, if you want to do it, take apart these screws, take note of what order they go in. Also, you'll see that down here, or in the corner, hey look, it's you! That's you right there. Uh, down here in the corner, it says, don't touch. Well, look, this is what happens if you touch it. Literally nothing. So, if you ever do take off the front panel of your computer, touch that. Touch it, you won't. And if you're thinking, oh, look, you touched it and the computer just turned off, no, that's a separate issue with this laptop. It randomly shuts down if you just bend it the wrong way or like tilted. Look, they treated it really badly when it was alone, so it still works. So now, let's just slap this back on. Eh. And yeah, that's the end of the video. Oh, and by the way, it does still boot. Oh.